Rod, today at Strata Hadoop World in Singapore, you gave a keynote, and you kind of talked about the tenets that I think a lot of people are looking at, basically data in practice, and mm -hmm. how you put it in practice. And you're from the Emerging Technology Group at IBM, which you would think is kind of maybe theoretical, <laughs> but you actually have to put this technology in practice for your customers. Well, I think that's the interesting thing about our work. It's not theoretical. It's customers that want practical solutions, and they want them you know, reasonably fast. And so when we talk about what's on the horizon, it gets kind of theoretical, but they want it brought down and shown its use right away. And so you know, part of these things is we've learned around analytics and around real time where it's going on this, they tell us the business problems. And it, as you said, they put it in terms that we can measure at that point. What are the uh, business results and is the technology or the, the new areas we're working in provide that uh, you know, boost for them? And if it does, great, and if it doesn't, that's good too because then that gives us a better guide to what we should be looking at. So you mentioned another thing that I thought it was really interesting was that you know you have Spark in your, in your uh, armor. Mm -hmm. you, you basically can deploy a solution for people so you don't have to focus on the technology solution as much mm -hmm. as understanding the business. It's, it's been an interesting um, few months now where as we talk about joining the Spark community and setting up a Spark technology center focused on hopefully growing the community and making it more, you know, better for business. Customers would come in with that, you know, gee, we, we think we know about how we'd use it. And we'd be prepared to go through, well, let's talk about the Spark technology, kind of, you know, as you, you think about for new customers. Um, but they would flip it on us, would basically say, okay, we're going to go down the Spark path. Let's talk about my business problem. So that is liberating because now you're not having to have questions about well, can Spark do this or that. They're going, I, I think I like this, but let me tell you my business problem. And now, instead of having to sit down and think about, well, is it going to be a, um, a SQL type of thing, or do I need a graph, or do I need streaming? Now it's about the solution and how they think it's going to operate in their business. That's a nice discussion to start having with the customer. That opens up doors for us around what solutions we can put together and how we can help our customers. Well, that's, that's a nice discussion because it's kind of a modern customer. Yes. But you also have been around for quite a while, not oh, you personally, oh, oh, but oh. IBM. <laughs> and some of your customers might be coming from old data legacy systems. Yep, yep. And do they have a different discussion? Um, sometimes it's, it's um, Z customers, mainframe. Um, you know, they are thinking about modernization nowadays. And as they look at their applications, they've you know, very high performance applications, but their business people have been very frustrated that they don't have any type of extensibility around customizing those applications. And so now, you know, you're, we're seeing more Z people applications come up where they're saying, I've got data in IMS or vSAM or things. Can I create a, you know, way to put those into RDDs and Spark so I now can create the service and then extend it maybe dockerize it, put APIs around it. So it's it's interesting how, that's what I like about Spark, it's an integration technology. Um, our thought is Spark goes everywhere, and now I could create, start on a notebook creating a Spark application, but then push it up to Z and change a little bit of the data, how it's, what type of data I'm going to use and off it's running. So it, but it's that holistic type of, again, what does it mean from a business aspect? So another major component that was in your talk, and I think several talks today, was machine learning. Mm -hmm. So that seems like it's a, I can't say new, but we've discovered a new use of machine learning. Oh, absolutely. And so what is IBM doing around machine learning? I know everyone probably thinks Watson, mm -hmm. um, but you've got a lot more going on there. Well, we've got, it, machine learning now is, is I think going to be a foundation in, in many of our offerings, our SaaS offerings. Um, in our platforms. And, and what you're finding is that as people, businesses, retail, and you know, we, by the example today was Target, on gee, if their analytics folks aren't uh, sweating bullets right now on what could they have done faster and better on this. So people are looking at machine learning as a way that when they see an event, how can they train the system to be able to react to it and be able to adjust their outlook, their, um, you know, uh, 
supply chain or uh, what they're going to do from a retail perspective. And they, you know, today it takes um, um, maybe you know a week sometime, analyze the data, go through the model updates, and put it back out on a you know a SaaS offering. You'd like to get that down to you know an hour, and so you can't do that with more people in the there. You have to do it where machine learning is going to be the effective avenue for them to go at that point. And so IBM is is getting heavily involved in smarter cities with machine learning in them as well. Across the board, yeah. um, you know, SaaS offerings, smarter cities offerings, um, you know, Watson APIs, of course, for what we're doing. Um, you look at what. Uh, um, we're even doing on our you know, DevOps for Bluemix. You know, we're thinking about how machine learning can help and predict where we're going to have failures. So there's a kind of uh, you know, enlightening about, gee, I hadn't thought about machine learning and how we could leverage that more. And I think our customers are doing the same things. Um, and I think it's going to be very, I shouldn't say customized, but it's not one size fits all from a machine learning standpoint. It's very contextual. Do you think we're going to cross a, a point, an inflection point or tipping point, where machine learning is actually before we understand we need it? Like um. it's almost like the the, <laughs> the promise of robots down the road, <coughs> where they react quicker than what we would normally react ourselves. I don't know, and and, and part of it is that gets kind of scary at some point. Um, I, I think where machine learning is is again what we've learned from Watson. How can it assist you? How can it help you be more effective at your job or your business on this? And you know, I think in certain areas, machine learning and health might alert you to certain situations. You think about where Internet of Things is going. But or self-driving cars, <coughs> or self-driving cars interprets what's happening. Um, but with the you know person still at the center of it, you know I've I've got a Tesla with the new dashboard and it's fun to watch. But at the same time, you know you take your hands off the wheel. Tesla tells you put your hands back on right the wheel. now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a good thing. I think there's a part of it that you know you you'd like to have it always be relevant from a machine learning standpoint. But where's that fine line from a user experience standpoint? How do I navigate this new world of assisting but not uh, overpowering people? So you were, you just said user experience. Yeah. Is that important to the emerging technology group too? Because I think one of the things about new technology is sometimes we lose the experience. Oh, yes. And the user is the one that really needs to be thought mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Is that important to you oh, folks? It's <laughs> extremely important to our team. We, we, while we're thinking about technology, we iterate on the user experience over and over and over again. And part of it is because we can go out and work with customers and POCs and others, we're you know, relentless over looking at that and where that's going to take us and where there were uh, hiccups in what we thought was a good model for this and listening to the customer. Um, you know, we've, today in particular, if you don't have a good experience right up front that people can get productive on very, very quick, they're not going to use it. They're, you know, they'll look, they'll look to other places. So you know, a cornerstone for all our folks is you know, technology underpinnings is good, but unless we can bring that into a user experience that the customer is going to really appreciate and be very flexible, you're not wed to this, it's going to be changing as fashion statements all the time, then uh, you know, you're not going to be relevant. So you got to do it. And that's the promise of a smarter city is that it learns, but it also adapts culturally to us as well. I and and that's where maybe there's some weakness in the ML right now. Oh, big weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is part of, you know, we talked about earlier as kind of rule of thirds. You know, there's industries, I think, that you, you look at where you can pick part of your ML on, and then there's your business where you tailor it and then to your organization. Well, think about cities the same way. And it's it gets, easy sometimes where you can take shortcuts and say, well, I don't mean machine learning. I pretty much know the pattern. I don't have to really do that. Well, then you know, you're missing a big point, which is kind of the discovery points. You know, what other things will machine learning pick up as it's ingesting more information from smarter cities you wouldn't have thought about? And so that's one of the things I think most people have to understand is as you do machine learning or as we evolve machine learning, how do we make it easier for the domain experts so they can they can tune it themselves, be able to find other sources of data, other things that they might be useful, and if it's not, then you know it's not costly to throw it away. So if you fast forwarded, 
let's say we have this conversation in Singapore next year. I think it's the first week in December. <laughs> what do you think will change in the world in that time frame from a technology perspective? Um, one thing is that I think that uh, looking at data, um, I, I, you know, we put a tenant in place last year that said all data streaming data. And the reason we did that is because data could be at rest, but it could have a record playback mechanism. And so one is, think of data as always a time series types of synchronization I want to do when I find events happen, something, traffic situation. Well, is that the same thing that happened a year ago? How do I sync those things up? So I think streaming data all the time. You know, mentality-wise, think about it that way. And the second part is then, domains of machine learning. You know, we've just started mm -hmm. with, you know, we, we put in system ML to Apache, there's Keystone ML, Tensor, you know, just came out. There's lots of things that are happening. Um, these are good. I think there's lots of innovation where we're going to see much more thought into, um, you know, report cards and how these operate. Today we don't have that very well. You know, you look and you go, well, this one's a good package, but compared to what exactly? How do we do these things better? So domain expertise with machine learning yep. is going to be a much oh, I think it's tighter huge. couple. Yep. Yeah. And I think it's great yeah. opportunities for, for people today. Um, you know, you, it's not just being an engineer. Now we're an engineer that you're going to put together smarter systems within a given domain. And I think that's going to be you know, great for people's careers and uh, you know, great for their success as well. Excellent. Rod, we look forward to working with you as the future unfolds. Thank you. Thank you.